Hello YouTube! Welcome to my channel. Today I'll go over the steps taken to upgrade a 3D printer with a Raspberry Pi 4 running Octopi and a touchscreen LCD. The web interface and controls added by installing the Pi 4 with Octopi are in my opinion indispensable. Having the touchscreen interface also opens up some new possibilities, like using the Octopi scripts for pause and resume and to more easily switch filaments for multicolored prints. You're going to need the following hardware. A Raspberry Pi 4 and a micro SD for the main controller. 30 millimeter cooling fan. The Pi 4 runs hot, so this is a necessary add. The GPIO extension board gives access to the GPIO pins even after connecting the touchscreen, so you can connect a fan, power, etc. Your 3.5 inch touchscreen LCD. A 5 volt power supply, 2 amps or more to power it all. You can use a USB charger through the USB 3 port or a buck regulator that connects to the printer's 12 volt supply and wire it to the 5 volt pins on the GPO like I do. A USB cable to connect the Pi to the Adreno Mega or whatever your printer's control board is. And some 3mm screws and standoffs to attach the Pi 4 to the case. To print the case, there are three parts. The Pi 4 mount bottom.stl, Pi 4 mount top STL, and the Pi 4 mount brace. The top and bottom make up the main case that encloses the Pi, fan, and touchscreen. The brace bolts to this and connects it to the frame of your printer. You'll probably need to do some customization on the brace to modify it to fit your particular printer. All the parts should print fine on any printer, no raft or supports needed. I print at 0.2mm layer height and 60mm per second speed. At bigger layers, the speeds and grates might get a tad rounded. Use your preferred material. I used PLA. It should hold up fine. All right, on to assembly. If your GPIO extension board didn't come pre-soldered, you'll need to solder the headers onto the board. Place the straight pin and angled pin headers on opposite sides of the board. The angled pins will face inward towards the center of the Pi, and placing them opposite allows for more room for the Pi to have heat sinks and cables. Now, using some standoffs and standoff screws, attach the Pi 4 to the bottom plate. The screw holes are not threaded, so it may go easier if you use a 3mm screw or a metal standoff to pre-cut the threads. Also, the Pi doesn't quite fit 3mm screws as commonly found in these PC standoff kits, so you may need to widen the mount holes using a 3mm drill. Alright, now that the Pi is attached to the bottom plate, plug the GPIO expansion port into the Pi, with the board facing inward. Then add extra standoffs as necessary to extend them until they're at the level with the pins. This will provide bracing for the LCD display. Attach the small fan to the top plate using the 3mm screws and bolts that came with the fan. The fan attaches to pins 4 and 6 on the Pi which will be the second and third pin on the top row of the header. If you'll be using an external 5 volt supply and not USB, attach the positive to the first pin, pin 2, and the ground to the seventh pin, pin 4. Now attach the LCD and press the two halves of the case together. In this example, I didn't have an extra LCD screen, but this is how it'll look. Now that you've got it assembled, let's do the software. The first step is to flash Octopi onto your microSD. Download and install Raspberry Pi Imager. Connect your microSD card to your PC and then run the Pi Imager application. Click Choose OS and then select Other Specific Purpose OS and finally select Octopi. Then click Burn the Image. In real time, this takes 5 to 10 minutes to download and burn the image. Once it's done, you can open the folder on the SD card named boot and edit the octopi-wpa-supplicant.txt file. Put in your Wi-Fi, SSID, and password and uncomment the lines by removing the pound sign at the start of each line. This will let it connect to your wireless network. Now you can put the SD card into the Pi and power it up. Wait a few moments and then access octopi.local in your browser. Octoprint will load and you can do the initial config. 
choose a user and a password to access the system. Then you'd click your choice in the reporting and health checks and finally set up your printer as the, for the default printer profile. When finished, it'll load into the main screen. Before configuring any additional plugins, let's set up the LCD. You'll need an SSH terminal for this. If you don't have one, download PuTTY. P -U -T -T -Y. It's a small file, but very useful. Type octopi.local in as the host name and click connect. In the console screen, log in with user pi and password raspberry. You can change this later. All of the commands will be listed in the description for easy cut and paste. For the base LCD install, you want to type git clone https colon slash slash github.com slash waveshare slash lcd-show.get. Now you adjust the permissions with the change mod r 755lcd-show. Move to the LCD show folder, set your execute permissions, run the installer, and then reboot the system. The LCD, the LCD should display this boot sequence after rebooting. Now we can configure it to work with Octoprint. Your terminal session will end when the server restarts. Close that terminal and open a new one. For the Octoprint LCD install, first do a general software update with sudo apt-get update. Update your installers with sudo apt-get install-f and then go in and edit your config.txt. Change the following line. You'll see one that says HDMI underscore CVRT. You want it to equal 800 space 533 space 60 space 6 space 0 space 0 space 0. Go ahead and hit escape colon W and Q if you're in VI to, to write and quit your changes and then install the X server files. Again, these commands are in the, the file description. You'll do an update for the libgtk and xserver-org. Um, another install for your essential files, xorg dev, xorg dev utils dev, and then restart the pi again. The terminal session will, will end. Close that terminal, open a new one. On my pi, I had to do the sudo apt git dash dash allow release intro change update um, to, to fix an issue. Um, you might as well do that for yours also. Uh, download and install the LTDD tools. Get the FB turbo tool with the git clone command and then change into that folder and run the config. We're going to go ahead and build the config file auto reconf dash vi configure dash dash prefix equals slash user make sudo make install copy the file over to etsy x11 xorg.conf and then do a reboot after the reboot log back in And then we install Octoscreen, wget https colon slash slash github.com slash z dash bolt slash Octoscreen slash releases slash download slash v2.7.4 slash Octoscreen 2.7.4 armfhf dot deb. Again, in the, in the description. Um, do note, you may need to go out to the Octoscreen GitHub and see what the latest version is, you can change the version numbers that this command will also be listed on their GitHub. And then you do a sudo package install for the octoscreen armhf.deb and then go into the octoscreen config and change the resolution. You want to set the resolution to 800 by 533 for this screen. Then do a reboot. After rebooting, Octoscreen should display on the screen and allow you to control your printer. Um, when it comes back up, you'll see the standard posting and then you'll see it load Octoscreen.
One of the most useful things is this allows you to make pause controls while the print's running from the printer without having to bring up your computer or your phone to access the OctoScreen website. You can also change the filament to do multicolor prints, and I'll cover that in an upcoming video. If you like this, please post any suggestions or questions in the comments, click like, and subscribe to see more. And until next time, thanks for watching.